So now we have to go for the interesting and harder direction of Arsena, Arsena Ascoli. Uh, so this one. So we assume our set A is closed, bounded, and equicontinuous, and we want to show it's, it's compact. Yeah, okay. Compactness means uh, we should show that any sequence in this set has a convergent subsequence. Uh, okay, so we consider such a sequence. Let's say we call it Fn. Uh, so this is a sequence in A, and we have to show where there is a convergent subsequence. So, to show this exists, there exists a convergent subsequence of this. Okay, and of course, uh, we should somehow try to get our hand on, yeah, on, on a possible limit. Uh, okay, so of course, we, we have to s argue somehow that there is a limit, and how, how do we get the limit? Uh, yeah, e essentially by pointwise arguments. Okay, so, so I mean a function uh, is, is like r to the infinity, uh, uh, so I mean at each point we have our values, and if we are in r to the n, then I mean, uh, yeah, Heine Borel, of tell uh, the proof of Heine Borel is that we just check for each argument one after the other. Uh, okay, and here we have to check at infinitely many arguments, and even worth at uncountably many arguments, uh, but still we can take our inspiration from the finite dimensional case and at least uh, go from a finite number to a, a countable infinite number. Mm. Okay, and for this uh, we, we look first on a countable subset of the interval 0 to 1, and for this we just take the rational numbers. Uh, so we first try to get things right at the rational numbers, then the hope is because our functions are continuous, or equicontinuous, maybe it's enough to know what happens at rational numbers, to know what happens everywhere, uh, and then maybe, okay, at least we, we have a starting point. Huh? So namely, we try to construct the limit of this sequence, or at least of a subsequence, at rational points. Hmm? Okay, so for this, uh, yeah, we take the rational points, we enumerate them, uh, so I call them x1, x2, x3, and so on. Uh, so this is an enumeration of the rational number, so q, uh, which are in 0, 1. Uh, so we know those is uh, the rational numbers, in particular those which are sitting between 0 and 1, is, uh, is countable, so we can write down uh, an enumeration of them. Uh, and I just do this here. Uh, so this is just a sequence which exhausts the rational numbers. Good, okay, and now I want um, yeah, to find a limit of my function sequence, or of, of a subsequence of this, at those rational numbers. And I do this one after another, in the same way as, as, you, as, as you prove Heine Borel, namely first you look on the first component and find a sub subsequence which is, is okay there. So here we start with x1. Uh, so I just consider uh, the sequence of my functions applied to x1. Uh, so I consider fn, the sequence of my functions, but applying those to the argument x1, and then I just get a sequence of numbers in R. Uh, okay. Yeah, let, let's say I'm, I'm looking on functions which go to R. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, in C it would be the same, but yeah. Okay, so uh, and Then I have here a sequence in R, and of course this sequence is bounded, uh, because my, uh, uh, my set A is bounded, so this means this sequence of functions Fn is bounded, bounded in the uniform norm, which means of course in particular if I'm evaluated at, at a fixed uh, value, it's, it's also bounded functions of, of real numbers. So this is a bounded sequence in R. Okay, and now we can use Bolzano-Weierstrass, which tells us that uh, bounded sequence in R, okay, there is a convergent subsequence. Uh, so this is now Bolzano-Weierstrass, which is the, yeah, the, 
the main basic argument for all for all those things uh, that you understand what what happens in R if you have a bounded uh, sequence. Uh, okay, so this tells us that okay, not the necessarily the whole sequence converges, but there is a convergent subsequence. So there exists a convergent subsequence. Uh, so this means, let me say, I yeah denote this by n k. Uh, so I'm running not over all n, but only over n's which are indexed by k. Uh, and then k yeah, is running through the rational numbers. And of course, this is only the f's applied to my argument f1. Okay, so this has a yeah this has a limit, and okay let let let, let me call the limit y1. Uh, so this subsequence has a limit, and I call this limit y1. So this is the limit k to infinity of this subsequence f and k of x1. Good. Now I have a, a subsequence of my original sequence, which at least at the point x1 is doing well. Okay. And now I can improve this and try to get it also. Uh, good at the point x2. So now I apply this subsequence uh, to the point x2. So I consider this subsequence now applied to x2. So now consider f and k not at x1 anymore because we know there it converges but now I apply it to the argument x2 only the subsequence uh, and again, this is now a bounded sequence of real numbers. Uh, uh, bounded sequence in R. So this means again, bolzano weierstrass tells me that I can choose a subsequence of this uh, sequence which, which converges. Uh, uh, so the same argument uh, as before. And this is the argument which, which you use for proving Heine Borel. Huh? I mean, you, you uh, first look at the first argument, you get a subsequence, and then you look at the second argument and you choose a subsequence of the already chosen subsequence uh, to also get things right at the second argument. So this is bolzano weierstrass again. So this tells us there is a convergent subsequence of this sequence. So uh, we have a convergent subsequence. So this means I have this f n, but now I'm not running over all k's anymore, but only over uh, sub-index set. So I have here n of k, and then the k's are indexed by l, and this here is now running over l. And of course, again, I'm just at the moment I'm applying this to x2. Uh, so that's my sequence of real numbers. I'm running over L. Okay, this subsequence has a limit. May let me call it y2. So put y2 is the limit of uh, this fn of k of L if L goes to infinity and the f's here are applied to the point uh, L2. Good, yeah. And of course, the main point of doing this is that what I have achieved in the first step is not being destroyed by improving also in the second step what happens at x2. Uh, so I mean, the first choice made things at x1, right? And now I choose another subsequence, which also makes then things at x2, right? But without losing what I already have for x1. Uh, because I mean I have now here a subsequence of the f's which I considered in the first step and in the first step uh, everything converged uh, to y1 and this is not being lost if I take a subsequence of this uh, I mean if, if a sequence converges subsequences converges and they converge to the same point uh, so that, that's of course important we can improve things at x2 without losing what we already have at the x1 uh, so note that we we still have that at for this subsequence, so this is a subsequence of a subsequence, which of course is a subsequence of the original sequence. Uh, so the limit of f of n of k of l of x1 
is still existent and is this y1 as before. Good, okay, and now should be clear. I continue in this way. Now I look at x3 and choose a subsequence of the subsequence of the subsequence to make things also right at x3. And of course, I mean now, okay, at some point I will be running out of, of letters for doing this, uh, this uh, yeah, uh, notation here for the subsequences. So it's better to rename my subsequences uh, with, with some other index. Huh? So I rename. Uh, with an upper index. So let's say uh, the original sequence, I call it F0 of R, so this is just F of R. Then the first subsequence which I, which I chose this N of R, I put an index 1 here, and it has here just an index R. Uh, so this is F N of R. And then the second subsequence which I have chosen, uh, so I mean this is a subsequence of this, this is a subsequence of this, uh, but I'm writing it as a sequence with, with its running index r, uh, so this is f of n of k of r. Okay, and so on. Uh, so I make choices in this way, I continue in this way, so I will choose a subsequence of F2, which I call F3, and which has, in addition of being uh, right at the point X1 and the point XT, X2, it will also be right at, at the point X3. So I continue in this way, and then I get a sequence of those subsequences. And continue in this way and so what do we get from this so this yields uh, subsequences of the original sequence uh, so subsequences so the first step I get a sequence uh, f1 the second step I get a sequence f2 uh, and so on so all of them are of course subsequences of the original sequence, but of course, in particular, each one is a subsequence of the previous uh, subsequence. Uh, so maybe more precisely, uh, we have that I iteratively choose subsequences of the sequence which I had before. So the sequence which I take in the k plus first step is a subsequence of the sequence which I had in the step before, so this means f of k of n. Good. Okay, and of course the choice is not arbitrary, but the choice is made exactly in this way, that in each step I get the correct behavior, or I get a limit behavior uh, applied to, to the argument, uh, the corresponding uh, x xk. Huh? So this means those guys have a limit behavior, at least for some arguments, so fn of k, uh, if n goes to infinity, I mean this is correct, yeah, at which arguments, at all the arguments with which I dealt before up to this point, huh? so it's correct, at the argument xi for i running from 1 to up to k. In the case step, I'm taking care of, of the argument xi. Huh? Uh, f x, x k, uh, but in the step before I have already taken care of the argument x k minus one and so on, and I'm not losing. Uh, what, what I have achieved, I'm not losing. Um, good. Okay, so that's uh, good, and this is more or less what you are doing for proving Heine Borel. Uh, if you are in R to the n, that's exactly what you are doing, and of course after a while you have exhausted all components, and then you know that you converge everywhere. But now, of course, the problem is uh, we, are, we cannot stop after finitely many points because, I mean, we, we, we want a convergence of our uh, subsequence uh, not only at finitely many points, but now at least at our rational numbers. Of course, we want it everywhere, but the first step is at the rational numbers, and, and one needs an additional argument here, uh, and maybe, yeah, this is the famous diagonal argument. Uh, which 
Yeah, where you have to choose things in the right way. Of course, if I here continue up to infinity, I mean I'm choosing subsequences of subsequences of subsequences, and then of course, in a limit, nothing might be left. So I need some additional way of choosing from this data here something which also has a which is correct at infinitely many points, uh, and that's the famous diagonal element and maybe yeah before we go to this maybe it's, it's good to take a break break and be prepared for for this one